Hello, my name is Santiago Ruiz and I am the conductor of Cantoria de la Merced from Córdoba in Argentina. I founded Cantoria de la Merced in 2004 with the support of our religious Catholic order, Orden de la Merced, not for the purpose of being a liturgical choir, but to become an artistic expression of human soul and desire for freedom. We are an amateur choir in the literal meaning of the word, people who loves what we do. During these 16 years of life, we have carried on countless musical projects a wide variety of repertories, participation in many national and international events, contests, symposiums and masterclasses. We have premiered for Argentina and Latin America many major works by contemporary European choral composers like John Rutter, Carl Jenkins or Ula Yaila, for example. And also we are always connected with local composers. We love to perform a cappella pieces, but also choral symphonic repertoire which is one of our favorite activities. The last year was a big challenge for us as for the rest of the choral world, but we were able to find a way to keep growing and making music even from a distance. We are incredibly happy to be part of Musica Sacra. Thank you so much for inviting us. In this workshop, we will learn about Latin American sacred music for choirs. We will try to reflect on how that special kind of music was and is composed in our continent to be sung by choirs not only for liturgical uses but also as concert pieces. In my experience, not only with Cantoria de la Merced but with many choirs, this kind of repertoire can be an unlimited source of learning. And not just musically speaking but also, even if you don't have a religious singer in your choir, as a possibility to experience the deep values and feelings that are inside those pieces. Every year, 
For our last concert of the season, the members of Cantaria de la Merced vote for the repertoire they would like to include in that exceptional concert. And even many singers are not religious people, sacred music is always represented in many pieces that are chosen and considered as favorites by the choir and also by the audience. During this atelier, we will try to find out why. America is a huge continent and Latin America itself is an infinite world of geographical and cultural diversity and so is our music. When we talk about music in Latin America, the four words that emerge are perhaps nature, land, authenticity, fusion, everything in a dynamic of constant mixing and integration of an infinity of cultural elements. Our original cultures, still in force in our continent, are combined with mainly European and African cultural elements, giving rise to a very rich and powerful identity. The result is a very colorful music, in many cases with intense rhythms and great energy, but in other cases just a simple music with an ancient depth. Of course, you can imagine that just as nature is hardly fully captured by a photograph, this music is almost impossible to be fully captured on a written paper. So the interpretation of this music requires a very interesting adventure for the academic interpreter. As you probably know, people in Latin America is general considered to be very spiritual. And of course, all major religions are represented in our people. It's quite hard to talk about how this process developed because now we know that the most of the times after Cristóbal Colón arrived to these lands, the beliefs and practices of the original cultures were fought and many times even destroyed. Of course, this did not happen in all cases and there are many examples of mutual respect and coexistence of beliefs. But when we talk about Latin American sacred music, it's hard to find pure examples. What we do have are incredibly rich examples of syncretism and colorful mixtures or traditions, mainly between Aboriginal cultures and Christian religion. Of course, since Latin America exists, immigration, even today, is another source of diversity and constant cultural development. In sacred Latin American music, the European bases are almost always present in the liturgical forms and in the compositional style. But despite that, the outcome is original and different. Those are the kind of examples we would like to share with you in this atelier. And even it's really impossible to show all the colors of Latin American sacred music, we will present many good examples in the repertoire of our concert for Musica Sacra with Cantoria de la Merced. Hanak Pachap Kusikwinin will be the first piece of our concert and there are good reasons for that. Hanak Pachap Kusikwinin is an anonymous music dedicated to the Virgin Mary. It is in Quechua a language which is an Aboriginal one, but the music is composed as a traditional European chorale. The certain date of the composition is of course unknown, but surely it was composed before 1622. Nine years later, in 1631, a Franciscan friar named Juan Pérez Bocanegra published it making it the earliest work of vocal polyphony printed in Latin America. 
The music is arranged for four parts and the lyrics are an ode to the Virgin Mary, containing many metaphors and about love and nature grounded in Quechua culture. It's a processional music, probably designed to be sung as people was walking and carrying an icon of the Virgin Mary. This piece is a good example of one of the processes that occurred in the creation of what we now call Latin America sacred music. Probably one American native was instructed in singing and in playing instruments and later in composing. And this piece has that kind of deep simplicity, that sense of natural beauty. Through the years we have tried many different approaches in the way a choir can sing that pieces. A cappella, but also with instruments doubling the bottom parts, with percussion reinforcing the strings of the processional style, and many contrasting ways to sing it, searching for a result that we can feel appropriate. And there are many great and different interpretations of the simple score. For this concert version, we search for a specially clear sound, more open than the usual for the vowels and full of rich consonant sounds that the original language presents. This music was published in Cusco, Peru, and even this day all print music is being discovered in archives in many churches, chapels and abbeys in all Latin America. Many of those scores are waiting to sound again, and luckily there are many festivals in Latin America that encourage the recovery of this kind of music and offer also the opportunity to perform it in the places they were composed 400 years ago. The second piece for this atelier and of Cantaria de la Merced concert represents a quite different kind of a much more contemporary sacred music in our continent. This is the case of sacred or liturgical texts that are set to music by composers that, being instructed professionally in music, are also deeply committed with our regional cultural development. And Maestro Alberto Grau, is most for sure one of the best examples of that. Maestro Grau was born in 1937 in Catalonia, but he moved to Venezuela when he was a child. In this country, Venezuela, he became one of the greatest promoters of choral music. As a conductor, he founded Scola Cantorum de Caracas, and with this choir he won prizes worldwide and, most importantly, started to build what now it's considered to be one of the most important Latin American choral centers. He was two times vice president of the International Federation for Choral Music. As a composer, he is devoted to music that sounds at the same time familiar and different. He is very committed with his local culture and especially with the development of new repertoires for children and youth choir. Earth, nature, land, ecology, tolerance are many of the themes that his music contributes to think about. In his choral works, many times music, movement and scene are considered as one, and the result is always powerful. The piece we are performing is a Pater Noster. This prayer that Christ teaches to his disciples as a way to pray to their Heavenly Father, not as strong Almighty God, but as a kind Father. Alberto uses the liturgical text in Latin, and the music that starts like a Gregorian chant quickly incorporates dissonances and an interesting rhythm complexity. Basses and tenors are functionally grouped in the texture most of the piece, and sopranos and altos are in charge of the first dissonances. The words are spoken in some section of the work, 
and are meant to be a natural parlato, as if we were actually praying. As a conductor, I had the opportunity to participate in a master class with Maestro Alberto Grau, and he worked on this particular piece. One of the strongest things I learned with him about the interpretation of this piece was that the text was supposed to be sung in a very human way, not only spiritually, but also very grounded in our human reality. The best example is perhaps the text Panem Nostrum Quotidianum da Nobis Odie, Give Us Our Daily Bread Today. I remember that the composer asked us to think about the suffering of many people in Latin America and all over the world that don't have anything to eat and that that's we try to use the way we sing the liturgical text as an opportunity to express actual needs and feelings of today's mankind. As a teacher, Maestro Grau published books regarding his two main concerns, conducting and composing especially dedicated to young conductors and composers. I am very happy to perform his Pater Noster in this concert. Latin America is a big unit formed by powerful cultural diversity. Despite sharing many things, every single country has its particular richness and Brazil contributes to music and sacred music with elements of great strength and identity. One of the facts, not only, but a particularly important one, is that in its demographic story, Brazil is surely the Latin American country with the greatest African influence. That influence is naturally reflected in many aspects of culture and music, but the rhythmic richness and the ritual value of music certainly stand out. And of course, that fact allows us to find an incredibly special kind of music related to religious practices. Even the piece we are going to present belongs to a Christian tradition. You must be aware that in addition to the largest religions, in Brazil there are infinities of cults and devotional practices related to the African cultures that inhabited the region. As we introduced a great figure like Alberto Grau with his Pater Noster in the previous piece, now we can present a great Brazilian musician with a fragment of a great masterpiece composed by him in 1976. Carlos Alberto Pinto Fonseca was a great Brazilian conductor. He won conducting awards not only in Brazil, but in Argentina and Italy. And like Maestro Grau, he was also a great composer and very committed to his culture. He said about himself, I don't describe myself as a nationalist composer, but as an eclectic composer. I cannot say that I have a single style of composing. My experiences range from impressionist music to 12-tone technique. The piece we choose for the concert is the Dona Nobis Pacem, or Agnus Dei, from Misa Afro Brasileira. As the title announces, the complete work is a mass, with a traditional liturg liturgical text in Latin, but in its melodies, harmonies, and mainly in the rhythms, Pinto Fonseca presents many elements of African culture. The first section of this Dona Novis Pacem is a quiet chorale with warm progressions and very legato melodic lines for all the voices singing the text Dona Novis Pacem, grant as peace in a very peaceful way, just piano. But as the piece progresses, we have a great crescendo that leads us to a maestoso with a tempo moving forward and singing forte and fortissimos with many divisi from the Agnus Dei. That powerful section subtly incorporates African colors into the score and needs a quite different attitude from the choir. We need to find a more open, majestic sound and we must sing with more accents 
as if we were incorporating a more percussive concept to the voices, very different than the sound we wanted for the first section, a real strong claim for peace. This Misa Afro-Brasileira was composed almost 50 years ago and still has a long way to go. Now, I would like to share with you some special sacred music from my country, Argentina. Our choral tradition in sacred music is mainly Christian and we have great choral conductors and many great choral composers and arrangers. Some composers have written their sacred music in what we could call European traditional academic style and many others have tried to reflect original music characteristics in their production. I think that there is one piece, a mass, that represents and achieves that attempt and began a path for Musica Sacra in Argentina. That work is Misa Criolla by Ariel Ramirez. This mass was composed in 1964 under the veil of the Second Vatican Council which suggested, among other things, the use of one sound language and popular rhythms for the creation of new liturgical music. Ariel Ramirez was a great pianist and a composer of great songs, collaborating always with great poets. But he was not a choral composer, so he created the melodies and the harmonies using the liturgical text in Spanish, and then Father Jesús Segade prepared the choral score. The work was scored for soloist, choir, and a group of folk instruments. Misa Criolla is performed by choirs all over the world, especially for Christmas concerts, and many times together with another work with very similar characteristics, Navidad Nuestra, our Christmas. After the success of Misa Criolla, Ariel Ramirez wrote another mass that, although is not so well known, was for the composer himself a much more important work. Mass for Peace and Justice. In his own word he said, Composing Mass for Peace and Justice was a predestination. It occurred during a performance of Misa Criolla in the Mater Admirabilis Chapel in Buenos Aires in 1979. During the religious service, Father Rafael Brown publicly asked God to compose another Mass that implore for peace and justice in the world. Thereafter, I assumed the commitment and I searched for the right material with the help of Father Osvaldo Catena and the support of the Father Jose Bevilacqua. In this new Mass, I tried to reflect the message of the Catholic Church of 2000 years, that of preaching for the validity of these two values of the Gospel and humanity. When I read the newspapers, and see what is happening in the world, as a man I am horrified. It is the same pain that I felt in my own country because of what we have lived through. I believe that as an artist one must contribute so that we do not repeat the past, neither here or elsewhere, and so the idea of putting this message into music came about. As an Argentine artist, I am able to convey a Christian message of peace within my work and I hope that the intention of my message will be deeply understood. I do not ask for peace either with shouts or with hatred but with love. Perhaps it can be a grain of sand in favor of peace and justice in the world. Events lived through in recent years in my country are what led me to write this new score. Never before have we gone through so many misfortunes. In the Mass for Peace and Justice, two important aspects must be considered. The first, in a short sentence, is the artistic phase. The other is the moral, which makes us reflect deeply on the meaning of the words peace and justice. Peace as the only means of coexistence and justice as a vehicle of union between peoples all over the world. 
Without that peace and without that justice, it would be impossible to paint, compose, write and enjoy all the gifts that God has given us in life to share with our children and our friends. In 1981, Ariel Ramirez complete his second Mass. Misa por la Paz y la Justicia, Mass for Peace and Justice, is similar to Misa Criolla in some aspects. Liturgical texts in Spanish incorporating some extra words from the proper of the Mass and from, from a speech by the Pope John Paul II. Also utilization of folk rhythms and instruments. Again, Ariel Ramirez composes the melodies and asks other musicians to set for choir his invention. In this case, Maestro Damian Sánchez, a great choral composer and arranger, writes a five-part choir for his mass. We have soloists again, and also a narrator includes some text that complement the message of the work. With Cantoria de la Merced, we recorded that mass complete some years ago for the foundation of Argentine music in the Netherlands and we selected the Alleluia for this occasion. The complementary text is sung by a soloist, a tenor, in a bawala style, which consists in a melody with a tritonic scale, like a major chord arpeggio. And even the rhythm is notated, the phrase must sound with the rhythm of the spoken word. The optimistic spirit of this hallelujah can be defined by the text sung by the soloist in Spanish. Happy are those who work for peace, because they will be called Son of God. The last piece we are going to use in this atelier trying to describe sacred choral music in Latin America is one of the most significant works we have performed with Cantoria de la Merced since our first rehearsal in 2004. We literally sang it on our first rehearsal and we have performed it in every special occasion since that moment. This is a choral piece written by Calixto Álvarez, a Cuban composer that wrote many pieces for choir and also incidental music for theater. In fact, this Lacrimosa is a part of his Requiem Osun, a choral piece that he composed for the play Requiem por Jariri in 1988. This work is special in many ways. First, unlike other examples we talked about, in this music the styles of European composing and Aboriginal singing are not synthesized in one musical language but superimpose one on another as if they were interdependent tunes. Tenors and basses sing a three-part choir with the liturgical text of the Lacrimosa. It belongs to the last verses of the hymn Dies Ide from the 13th century and describes the scene of the final judgment where man arise from the ashes and ask the Creator for mercy. This choral part presents close harmonies and is meant to be sung in a very expressive but traditional way. On the other hand, a female soloist and later all the sopranos and altos have a big challenge. They have to sing an African Yoruba chant in a style of singing that needs to be found far away from the bel canto technique. This ritual kind of singing is extremely powerful and the words sung in Lukumi dialect are an invocation. It is a prayer to Odua, a major orisha, a deity considered the ancestor, the oldest and as such the god of the dead. Father Odua, the main, sacred priest, allow us to enter in your home. The principal, sacred priest, we salute you. This work is also special because every time we sing it produces a new effect in our souls as artists and of course in the audience. Some years ago we filmed a short movie in our home Basilica Nuestra Señora de la Merced in Cordoba, Argentina with this music and I would like to finish my presentation sharing with you this Lacrimosa composed by Calixto Álvarez in our film version. 
But before that, I would like to thank again to this great festival organization for inviting us to participate. I am incredibly happy to be part of Musica Sacra with my Cantoria de la Merced in this very special context. Perhaps now more than ever we need music to arise, to say Alleluia, to become one as a universal choir and look for peace, justice and love. Thank you very much. Pero ma 